Hello, everybody, and welcome to From Poverty to Progress, the channel that promotes an awareness and understanding of human material progress. My name is Michael Bagoon. I am the author of the From Poverty to Progress book series. The first book in my book series is entitled From Poverty to Progress, and it explains the origin and causes of modern progress. My second book, which I am happy to announce is now available on pre-release, is called Promoting Progress, a radical new agenda to create abundance for all. I take the lessons learned from the theories in the first book and apply a concrete progress-based reform agenda to promote widely shared economic growth for all. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different than I've done before. I'm going to continue my series on giving evidence for progress, but this time I'm going to talk about a Substack post recently made by Yaw. Yaw Asamoa has a Substack column that mainly focuses on development, but particularly development within Africa. And if you're interested in this kind of thing, I would recommend subscribing to him. So in this post, Yaw is analyzing economic growth data that has just been published by the World Bank. And he essentially looks at countries and ranks them by how much growth they've had in the last 10 years. Now, this is a nice supplement to some of the work that I did in some of my other videos. Some of the data that I use is a little bit out of date. So it would be a fair complaint by someone who's a skeptic of progress to say, well, things are very different today than they were just a couple of years ago, because obviously we just had a major pandemic and that could have changed economic growth substantially. So what Yaw does is he groups countries into how much they have grown over the last 10 years. The first group, um, the, what he calls the economic super miracle income growers, those are the countries that grow 10 to 11 percent on average per year for 10 years. Now, 10 to 11 percent economic growth is unbelievable. 30 years ago, Many people would have said that that kind of economic growth is absolutely impossible. But yet, here we go. What's even more interesting is that it's happening in Bangladesh. The two countries that he talks most about are Bangladesh and Guyana, but I'm going to focus particularly on Bangladesh. Now, Bangladesh, if you're of the baby boom generation or a little bit younger, you know that Bangladesh is a byword for absolute poverty. The only time Bangladesh makes national headlines is when there's massive flooding or when it's hit by a hurricane. It's basically, Bangladesh was basically poverty punctuated by natural disaster. But things have really changed in that country. And how did they do it? They followed a tried and true path towards prosperity, which is manufacturing and exporting textiles, which is usually consists of some form of clothing. Bangladesh is the third highest seller in garments and clothes, fall trailing China and the European Union. The Bangladesh government made special economic zones, which are basically free market zones of low taxes and low regulations to obtain foreign direct investment, targeting the labor-intensive, light manufacturing textile industry. This is a tried and true method of stimulating economic growth. And as I point out in my first book, having a high value added export industry is one of the five keys to progress. So now the other nation that was growing at over 10 to 11 percent is following a very different path. And that is Guyana. Guyana is in South America and they recently discovered large amounts of oil. Now it's going to be interesting to see what kind of impact that oil will actually have on the standard of living of the people living in Guyana. I think there are a number of skeptics of progress who say that in many cases, growth in per capita GDP doesn't really measure it for the average people. And in the case of oil exporting countries, that's often the case. It's going to be a real challenge for Guyana to translate that oil wealth into something that actually benefits the masses. But still, growing 10 to 11 percent over the last 10 years is an amazing achievement. So now let's go on to the next category, what Ya calls the miracle growers, or those countries that are growing 5 to 10% on average for the past 10 years. And you'll notice there's a total of 13 countries, most of which are in Africa 
and Southeast Asia, which have experienced these levels of growth. And I think one of the more important trends that we've already seen over the last decade or so, and is probably going to accelerate, is the movement of manufacturing exports from China to South and Southeast Asia. As you may know already, Chinese labor is no longer cheap. 30 years ago, they were some of the cheapest labor in the entire world. Now, they're actually getting on the expensive side. So many Western countries are moving manufacturing outfits from China to Southeast Asia, and that has resulted in phenomenal economic growth in that area, particularly in Vietnam. And some of that growth is also spilling over into Laos and Cambodia. This graphic here showing that when you put all the countries of what is sometimes called Alt-Asia together, i.e. Southeast Asia plus India, in terms of labor force and the amount of exports, this region is very competitive with China, and most likely they will see significantly greater economic growth in China. Another superstar in economic growth is Ethiopia, another country that during my childhood was an absolute byword for poverty and famine. And it's very nice to see that they're seeing very robust economic growth. In this case, the foreign investment from China into their energy sector, particularly hydroelectric dams, is playing an important role in creating economic growth in a formerly very poor country. So now we're going on to what we could call the good growers, those that have grown 4 to 5% over the last 10 years. And that's still a very impressive amount of growth. There's another 13 countries that fit into this category including Congo, which is one of the poorest countries in the world. Now, Congo is exporting cobalt, which is very important in lithium-ion batteries. It's unclear to me how much that exporting those raw materials is actually going to translate into economic growth that benefits the masses. That's been one of the fundamental problems of Africa, that they have the raw materials, but they can't leverage that into manufacturing prowess. The next group are the countries that have enjoyed steady growth, or 2 to 4%. It's slow in comparison to Bangladesh and Guyana, but still, 2 to 4% growth is pretty darn impressive. That's the level of growth that in Europe and the United States we consider to be normal during good economic times. There are a total of 19 countries that fit into that category, with Indonesia being the most populous. So what we can see, if we use 2% growth over the last 10 years, we have dozens of formerly poor countries that are achieving that level of economic economic growth. That's very impressive. Keep in mind that during this time period, there was a global pandemic. So we would expect economic growth to be slower than normal. Now we're getting into countries that have some economic growth, but quite frankly, not that impressive. This is a much bigger category. This consists of about two dozen countries. The growth isn't that impressive, I have to admit, compared to what we've seen up till now. But still, that is economic growth. And we can see that that is impacting pretty much every region around the world. Now, there's another dozen countries that are essentially a flat line. Some of the biggest and most important are Argentina, Canada, and Mexico, which I have to admit, Mexico surprises me a little bit. Now, in terms of countries that are actually poor, that have declined 1% to 3%, a lot of these countries are oil exporting countries. And oil exporting can create an enormous amount of wealth in your country, particularly for the elites, but it's entirely dependent on the price of oil. Now, in terms of countries that have declined 3 to 5% per year since 2012, that's doing really poorly. Brazil, which was a country that looked like they were in the takeoff stage 20 years ago, now they're anything but there. Algeria, Chad, Congo, Brazilon, and Zambia also fit into that to a large extent due to oil commodities and copper commodities prices dropping. Finally, the last and by far the worst category is countries that have declined 6 to 8% per year on average since 2012. That, that, quite frankly, is terrible. 
this is not what you want. But if you look at that list, they're pretty much all oil exporting countries. And many of them have had civil war. If you look overall at this list, I think it's fair to say that economic growth is fairly widespread. There certainly are many countries that are still dependent on the exportation of raw materials, particularly oil and gas, and they are highly dependent on the ups and downs of the economy. So by my very quick back of the envelope calculations, approximately double the number of countries are showing economic growth versus the number of countries that are declining. And most of the declines are because of oil prices. And what's even more impressive, the number of countries that are growing at more than 4%, which is very strong economic growth, is roughly the same as the number of economies that are declining. So I think it's very clear that over the last 10 years, there has been strong global economic growth. And I want to thank y'all for writing up this very interesting article. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps the channel to grow. If you'd like more resources, I'd recommend going to my website, FromPovertyToProgress.com. With a free email subscription, you get free ebook samples, free audio samples, and you can buy discounted ebooks and audiobooks. If you insist on paying full price, you can get ebooks, paperbacks, and hardcovers at Amazon, or if you're a bookstore or a library, you can get them at Ingram Spark. Audiobooks are available at Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. If you'd like to know more about books related to this content, I'd recommend going to my other website, which is the TechRatchet.com. It consists of an online library of over 280 book summaries on the topics of technology, history, economic growth, and progress. And now we're getting on to the exciting part, a free book giveaway of my first book, From Poverty to Progress. If you're a regular listener, you already know the rules. If you don't know the rules, please pause this video and read this description. There's a free book giveaway every week. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time.